Okay, I'm here with the exciting, the wonderful, the fabulous, wish I'd met her in a different life, Georgia Arnold. Georgia is from uh, a variety of different stations. Uh, we know her from the MTV Staying Alive Foundation. Uh, we also, at least I know her from being able to put out really cool messages as they relate to health and love and sex and everything else that we love in our lives, but to be able to do it in this really wonderful way through Sugar and that series that they've got. And uh, she's a friend that's come back to the Howard Thurman Center, and we wanted to just chat for a little while. So good to see you. Good to see you. So uh, I'm always trying to make sure that we get young people thinking a little bit about their stations in life and how they start off. So how'd you start off with the MTV, the MTV Staying Alive Foundation, which I'm sure it wasn't called that right away. Um, well, it didn't exist uh, when I started. So I got my job at MTV. Um, I was a temp for two days. So that's how it started. And MTV at the time, we're going back like 18 years. Yes, right. Very tiny. It was one office in London. We had one channel across Europe, and that was it. Right. And so what it meant was there was only 100 people there. If you had a brilliant program idea about headbanging, you could not only write, direct, produce it, you could host it as well. Really? That was not my brilliant idea. So <clears throat> I wasn't, didn't really want to do that. But I was very interested in charitable issues and social issues. So I thought that maybe I could go in that direction and I was hired after my two days temping a year later I was hired to work for the head of MTV okay and so he pretty much let me do what I wanted uh -huh. and it grew from there and um, the history of staying alive is that um, in 1997 I went to meet with the UN and I first met with UNICEF and we actually wrote them a, a, a reasonable size check and it was my first mistake that I made a few along the way but I realized quite quickly that actually just writing a check is very unemotional and uh, you don't get anything back from it. It's like, send it off, and I was like, well, what happened to it? Mm -hmm. So I then met with um, UNAIDS, and they said, well, why don't you make a program about young people who are living with and affected by HIV? Mm -hmm. So I said, ah, you know, that feels very BBC Two or public service. Right. I said, that's, that's not really MTV. So there we go, that was the second make mistake I made. Uh, uh, and I came back to the office in London, and someone said, well, we could do that. We'll just stick a pop star on the front of it. So uh, the 1st of December 1998, we premiered um, the, the first Staying Alive documentary, and we had George Michael top and tail it. I was remember he, that. You remember that? I do. I really do, yeah. It was big, but at the time, you know, it was huge. George stuff. Michael, right. Exactly. Um, and then it grew from there. So I didn't have, I would like to say I had this real strategic vision. I right. knew exactly what I was doing. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, I got a call from the MTV channels around the world saying, this was really good what you did, can you make it again? Right. And the way that I did it was I got funding, so MTV paid for some of it, so did UNAIDS and so did the World Bank. And the other thing we decided from day one was that because MTV only reaches a certain element of the population, mm -hmm. and not necessarily those who are hardest hit by HIV, sure. we created it rights cleared, which meant that we can give it away to any individual, any university, youth group, and any broadcaster who wants it. And it's not about a subversive way of getting the MTV brand out there because we tell right. the broadcasters they can take the brand off if they want to. So now we reach 100% of the top 70 AIDS-impacted countries around the world with gotcha. our distribution. So a lot of people wouldn't think that an MTV would do what you just talked about, and that is to have the rights be able to be stripped off of it. Uh, it's not really about our brand, but it's about the information. Um, did you push them to do that? Is that, or is that part of the culture? I think it's part of the culture, um, and it actually came from my boss, Bill Rohde, mm -hmm. um, who chairs the Staying Alive Foundation, which is what it grew into. Right. But it came from him, and he was the one who allowed it to happen. And the brilliant thing in working in an organization like that, and working for a man like that, is he gives you permission to go and do what you want to do, mm -hmm. and then you make the most of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have just sat there and done a documentary and sure. walked away from sure. it. And he just said, every year, at the end of each year, he'd say, yeah, you had a really good year. Go and do better next year. Is that right? Yeah, do bigger and better. Uh -huh. So, you know, not much direct personal management, but actually just gave you the freedom to go and do it. So MTV spends a lot of money on this cause. Why? Um, because they believe in it. Because, um, you know, without tra sounding trite, I think it would be irresponsible not to talk about sex so openly. And I, I think, you know, when you look at our audience around the world, mm -hmm. first of all, one of the reasons we got involved in HIV is it affects our audience directly. Sure. Nearly 50% of new infections are globally at young people. But also, um, 
kids, our audience, are thinking about sex. Right. They may not have had it yet, right. they may have had it last night, or they may get it next week, but they're always thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So it's our role that we can just go in there and give them the information. And then it's up to them, it's not preaching, it's up to them to decide what to do with that information. And so greet us in America, I mean, I don't see some of the things that I think are out there that MTV is doing and your foundation's doing with regard to that, but am I just missing it or uh, do we just take a different view on all of this in terms of uh, some of the pop culture and youth culture um, messages and bits of information that you folks are putting out there? Am I missing it or we just don't show that sort of stuff here? Oh, um Oh, my counterpart at MTV US would be upset about that. Oh, oh sorry. No, that's yeah. okay. That's, I think it's a fair point. Look, the challenging thing, I, I work in the only non-profit mm -hmm. section of Viacom. Mm -hmm. And I say that quietly because if Viacom probably realized that we were still there. But <laughs> no, that's not true. Viacom are very, very supportive of what we do. But the fact of the matter is that MTV is a commercial broadcaster. And it is, as you know, you know, particularly these days, but companies are all about, you know, it's how do we make money. Yep. <clears throat> and so we're the part that doesn't make money. So for, you know, it gives you as much support as possible. Um, and actually, you know, I sort of feel I'm a little subversive at MTV. I, I sort of, I get paid by MTV, which is fabulous, but I don't really work for them. Sometimes I feel I work more for UNAIDS mm -hmm. because I'm creating something using the MTV brand, which, you know, can you imagine? Any charity being given the brand to use in the way that I do is huge, Fantastic. massive value. Right. But then being able to give it out to anyone else. Mm -hmm. So it is, you know, we do have certain times where we air where we air social issues. A lot more nowadays. You actually see it within the mainstream programming. Mm -hmm. You know, sixteen and pregnant, sure. awkward, those sort of content. Right. What we have to do, and I think we have to do it better, is actually be able to use those sort of programs as platforms to get information out there online. Sure. So so you mentioned things like 16 and pregnant, awkward. Um, I love awkward. Right? I love awkward. Uh, for a little while, we had an American version of kids. Uh, oh, I, yes. I Channel think, 4 show. Yes, that's yeah. right. So you know that there are so many critics in this country that were saying that this is just reinforcing bad behavior. We shouldn't have our young people watching these sorts of uh, dramas uh, or comedies or, or, or those sorts of things. I mean, what do you say to that? And especially where you're talking about pushing more content uh, through these through these uh, shows. Um, I think the people who say it are not the young people themselves. Mm -hmm. I think if you took MTV away or you made it PG viewing. Um, kids would still have sex, they'd still think about it, they'd still wear short skirts, they'd still find access to their music. I mean, as you know, MTV hardly plays music videos anymore because you can access it online in, from you know different channels. So it, I don't think you can blame MTV for this culture, but that's why I like what we do because we're able to sit within that. We're able to, if you, you know, you cut open the brain of a 16 year old, you'd see that they think about um, fashion, music, boys, girls, religion, sex and, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Sure, sure. But sure. we can be part of that and so we should use that space to do the best that we can. Right. And I, you know I'm working the drama Sugar, um, we're currently working on, we're nearly finishing Sugar 2. Nice. So we're working with the Kenyan and the Nigerian government mm -hmm. and sitting with them and showing them content that is absolutely groundbreaking in terms of the way that it's portraying sex. Mm -hmm. Now that they, they watch American shows like that but they don't have their own productions right, of it, right. but it, they're very accepting of it because they know that things have to change. Is that right? Mm. Um, why'd you pick HIV AIDS? For what you I could have picked anything. Yeah, I, could, I pretty much could have, but it makes the most sense. It affects our audience around the world, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and sex is something that's top of mind for kids. Gotcha. So this week in the New York Times, I read an opinion piece by Bono. And, or Bono, Bono, I'm not sure how to say it. But, I say um, Bono, you may say Bono. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he wrote a piece that sort of chronicled 30 years of AIDS-related efforts and said, go America, you led the way, you made some wonderful progress, declare a little victory, and um, that was what I was left with when it was all said and done. But I was also left with this notion that okay, can't we move on to something else as a big 
part of his message as well. I mean, what do you think? Did you get a chance to read that piece? I didn't read it, but I saw a little bit of what he did on CNN, mm -hmm. and I, because I was in the States yesterday, so I saw some of what they did. It, and, you know, on the one hand, I do think go America. I will happily say President Bush did an amazing thing in setting up yeah. PEPFAR, um, and even pushed his own personal point of view in terms of how he addresses this. He so, sure. you know, I, I think so. And I think, yes, declare a little victory, right? When you look at the statistics, things ha are getting better. Mm -hmm. But there's a big but, in my point of view. Okay. Um, and the but is that the Global Fund has had to stop um, its next round of funding, which is coming up, which is a huge disaster. It means that in 2013, the countries that absolutely rely on money from the Global Fund are no longer getting it. Mm -hmm. So people who are currently on treatment being paid for by the Global Fund will have to come off treatment. People won't get onto treatment. And yet the current debate around HIV and AIDS is that treatment is prevention. Right. So it, when actually, I think we are at possibly the most concerning time ever in terms of AIDS because the world is sort of turning its back. The world's going, well, there's a lot of other things that we need to worry about. Right. And by the way, there is. Sure. There absolutely is. Um, but they're sort of going, well, AIDS under control now. That's okay. We'll, we'll leave that for a bit. Mm -hmm. My concern is that if you leave it for a bit, the right. infections go up, um, and you need, you're not going to get people on treatment because there's no money left. Sure. What about some of those other issues that I think circle around AIDS, poverty, uh, uh, war? Um, women, education. Women, education, uh, name it ism. Uh, the other, uh, the, you know, the outright hostility towards certain people in the society. Uh, do we feel like we're we're sort of hitting this this issue from all sides? And 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 are we even making the connection that there's a whole lot more that's got to be done if we're trying to keep people from getting AIDS and um, to really do some prevention around AIDS? Yeah. Um, yes, I think is the answer, and I think particularly when it comes to women. <clears throat> excuse me, maternal health has been a much bigger focus than it ever used to be. And that's really good because actually a lot of women are first tested when in developing countries, actually in developed countries as well, but when they're pregnant and they find out they're pregnant. So right. if you can find out then and then treat it, then you're actually protecting the mum and the baby. So that's really, it's a good thing. The trouble is there's not enough money in the world to, right. to tackle all of these issues. Sure, sure. You know, if we could educate kids then you could, um, oh you, and particularly again girls, you could empower mm -hmm. girls to be able to stand up and fight for their own sexuality and the opportunity to say no if, right. if they're given the opportunity. But we don't have enough money for that. You know, nutrition, if you feed people well, then right. <coughs> they're likely to live longer if they're HIV positive. So right. people are dealing with HIV more holistically, but the money's running out without a doubt. Sure. So, um, What's that one thing you say, hey, I wish people wouldn't ask me about what I do and this whole issue and stuff? Something that you get annoyed every time you're at your cocktail party and they say, Ah, Georgia. Beyonce. Is that right? Is that right? <laughs> or SpongeBob, depending on their age. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't sit next to either of them, although I do have SpongeBob on my desk because I work for Nickelodeon as well. Oh, okay. Uh, which is why I mentioned SpongeBob. Um, no, I, I think it's interesting actually, sometimes people um, will ask me whether or not I'm HIV positive, uh, and I always find it a people very... People ask you that. Huh? Yeah, and I find it a very interesting question, sure. that you know, apparently only if you're HIV positive right. can you work in HIV, right. well I actually think the whole issue of HIV is for everybody. Of so course it is, right. That's it. But I don't get annoyed. You don't get annoyed. Well, okay, I do get annoyed. Yeah, that is it. <laughs> And um, so we've got this wonderful audience of our young people, certainly here at the university, but uh, I hope a lot of young people are watching our site and everything else. Um, what's the message? One message, one big message. Get, get tested. Get Use tested. condoms, get tested. Two messages. Fantastic. Protect yourself. Good.